Hi guys, Colton Ryan here, and today we're going to talk about the differences between Huskies and Malamutes. So a lot of the times you see online, Huskies and Malamutes seem to be mislabeled at times. They do kind of look similar, at, like the markings of their coats I guess can be kind of similar, but really if you look at them, they're not a whole lot alike in looks. For obvious reasons, Malamutes are bigger than Huskies. Malamutes on average, um, females average from 70 to 84 pounds and males average 80 to 95 pounds. So that's quite a bit bigger than Huskies, especially the female Huskies that are usually around 35 to 50 pounds. And then for males, it ranges from 44 to 59 pounds. And Colt is even bigger than that. Colt, I believe, is 60, 65, around there, 65, 67. But he is a bigger boy and his dad was a larger size. Another thing about them, one of the obvious things, you know, everybody loves Huskies, bright blue eyes. Malamutes, a purebred Malamute is said to not be able to have the bright blue eyes because they don't have the gene. So if there is a Mal that has blue eyes, it's more likely been crossbred with a Husky or another breed that has the blue gene. Also going into more physical body build and whatnot, Mal's are more broad. They, um, their heads are also bigger. The muzzle on Malamutes is more blocky, I guess. Comparative to a Husky, it's more blocky, but it's not that huge. The American Kennel Club describes it not so well either. <laughs> they described it as um, it isn't pointed or long, it's an in-between, and it's not stubby. So <laughs> I know that's not a very good detailed description either, but apparently even the American Kennel Club couldn't even come with a good description. As you can see, Colt's muzzle is on a little bit more on the skinnier side and longer side. Not as skinny as like a Greyhound or anything like that. It doesn't have like a whole lot of blockiness to it and their face is a lot more thinner and smaller. If he could put his ears up. Whoop. <laughs> well, you're not getting the full effect there, but um, Husky's ears are said to be more on top of their head instead of, I guess, mouths are closer to the sides. Also, the ear shape is a little different between the mouths and the Huskies. They still have the upright ears that they hold up. Huskies are considered a medium-sized breed. Malamutes are considered a large-sized breed. Blue eyes is very common. You see a lot of pictures with the blue eyes, but brown eyes are also possible, and the bi-eyed is possible too. So sometimes you'll see one brown eye, one blue eye kind of ordeal. That's okay, that's still identified as and specified on the AKC's website that it is still considered a purebred. But like the Huskies, the coloring is kind of the same, I guess. They have the black, you know, black and white, red and white, the gray, silver, and white. So there's a similarity between them. And like I said, the markings kind of can be the same, like they kind of have like the white face going on, but also fur on a Malamute is supposed to be more dense and thick and um, their hair is supposed to be kind of coarse too and it um, also lists that the hair should never be long or soft. The tail is a little bit different too. The husky tail curls over a little bit more kind of like a slight sickle type thing and the Malamutes is just pulled up and carried over. It doesn't make like sickle circle kind of thing that huskies tails do but they do hold them up too it's just it kind of holds up and walks over and they hold it above their hold above their spine I saw a few people had mentioned that but any of the things that are similar about them both working breeds so they both require yes yes as somebody has too much energy right here as i'm talking about this um they both require lots of activities um, things to keep them busy, keep them wore out, pretty much. A tired husky is a happy husky. They need activities to do and it's recommended um, for both of them that they are in very active families. Both are listed as good 
family companions. You want it to be an active family. So if you guys go camping and whatnot, do hiking, stuff like that, sports, outdoor activities, a husky would probably be a thing to consider after you do the rest of the research on them. <laughs> but one thing that's the same about the huskies and the mouths when it is in regard to their coats, and this is with all northern breeds, do not, do not shave them. The only recommend cutting that um, the American Kennel Club says you should do is if the hair on the paws, and I can actually show you because Colt's needs trimmed up a little bit. As you can see Colt's paw here, how it's got a lot of hair right here. I know, but you don't like that. A lot of hair right there. That's the only trimming. Whoa. Yes. That's the only trimming that the American Kennel Club suggests is when it gets too long like that, you can like trim that up a little bit. But otherwise, you're not supposed to cut their hair. You're not supposed to shave it. That is a big no-no. Yes, no. Yeah. And some people, you know, bring it up in the summertime. Well, they got all that hair. Aren't they going to get hot? They have a natural cooling system. So what happens when you shave them or cut their hair, it, it messes up that and actually could end up making the dog have a harder time in the heat and even possibility of the dog getting a sunburn because of their skin being exposed when it's not supposed to be. And I know there are some people who have who have shaved their northern breed and I've you know seen and talked to groomers that have said you know they'll have people come in and be like shave my dog and they'll try to explain it to them and they'll try and say you're not supposed to shave them like they're they're okay they have a natural way of cooling themselves down and keeping them cool in the hotter months but the people don't listen like no you're gonna shave my dog. So it's kind of one of those things like where the groomer's hands are tied, they want to be there to provide service and some will turn the people away, but other times maybe the, the owners won't allow them or the business that they work for won't allow them to turn them away for that. So always something to keep in mind. Don't shave them. It does more harm than good. And even if you have shaved them before, you're not supposed to. And if your dog did okay with being shaved, all right, well, it might have seemed okay, but maybe it wasn't completely okay. But even if it was okay, they, it's not recommended. You're not supposed to do it. And we'll never shave Colt. <laughs> okay. Another thing with um, mouths that I was reading about, which really surprised me and kind of made me laugh a little bit, but... Um, it's recommended as soon as you get a mouth, you start asserting your dominance and let them know that you're the dominant one in the household. Otherwise, apparently they, they can be, uh, they can be pretty bad and they're very intelligent too, like huskies and apparently they'll use it against you and not listen to anything you say if you don't assert your dominance. I'd never heard that before, but as I was researching stuff, I saw... Both dogs are similar in the stubbornness factor as somebody is over here pouting because I thought locking him in here might make him stay and be social, but he's just pouting by the door. But the stubbornness level is definitely supposed to be the same. Very challenging, intelligent breeds that are going to test you a little bit. Both dogs are listed as high energy dogs. It also says that mouths are suggested not to be off leash just like the huskies since they you know they're working dogs they have so much energy the body of the mouth is more broad and the chest is uh, deep and strong bred to pull more heavier type equipment whereas huskies were bred to do lightweight and quick pulling shorter times longer distances kind of thing and they're supposed to be able to go for long periods of time without food or water. So that's one of the things that the people who bred Huskies, one of the main things that they like so much about them was that. And eventually we'll get more into that. I'm going to do a video about history of Huskies and how they became what they are today, along with some of the uh, more famous Huskies, such as Balto, Togo, that participated in the serum run in Nome, Alaska back in 1925. Both dogs do need lots of exercise. There's stuff that you can do for mushing. We're going to a tutorial next month to try that. Um, there's lots of things that you can buy. You can buy 
bike attachments so the dog can run with you while you're riding the bike. They have scooters that you can hook the dogs up to that they can pull into the temperament that's listed on the um, American Kennel Club's website. Huskies are listed as energetic, intelligent, friendly, stubborn, high prey, and mischievous and loyal. <laughs> Definitely the mischievous though, especially when it comes to certain things like stealing oranges. Somebody loves to steal oranges. Anytime we have oranges, he's trying to get them. And then the temperament for Malamutes is listed as affectionate, loyal, playful, but dignified. They are working dogs and they are energetic, but they're not as rambunctious and as crazy as Huskies. Like, oh. What are you doing? You biting your foot? What are you doing? Crazy. All right, guys, that's it for our video today. Hope you liked this. And if so, like and subscribe to see more videos of Colt and I. I think our next adventure will be at the pumpkin patch because I found one that allows dogs and I'm so happy. The one we typically go to doesn't and we have another larger one in the area, but they also do not. But I finally found one that's close to us and they allow dogs. So hopefully our next video, we will be at the pumpkin patch. All right, thanks for watching guys. Bye.